Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Something Something Podcast. My name is Eric Kasloff, and with me, as always, is Larry Sands. Say hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and how, and how was your day, good sir? Well, oh, it was good. It was good. You know, um, uh, and actually, you and I had talked about this a little earlier on in the week where um, you know, I'm, I'm shooting this, uh, Christian film, right. And, um, I'm actually doing some other shooting here and there throughout the week. And I was really maybe tired or run down and I really didn't want to go and shoot because I was so tired. And, and this is one thing that I kind of want to touch on, um, is how filmmaking and being creative will lift your spirits. I, I think, and because that's not not been heavy on my mind, but I just want to let people know that you know whether whether it be art or or film or editing or anything having to do creative, we need that. People need that. I think in order to to stay balanced. I don't know how you feel about that. And I know we just kind of jumped right into it, but I feel a need to just put that out there that um, it, it's a testament. Art or creativity is a testament to, I feel, well-being. Does that make any sense at all? That makes complete total sense to me, and I 100% agree with you. Good, good. I just, I, I really feel the need to just get it out there right, right off the bat because, you know, um, been going through some stuff and, uh, just, I, I, I've realized that filmmaking is my passion and I know what I'm doing, <laughs> oddly to say, sometimes it may not look like it, but, but it always pulls me out of whatever funk I'm in. So, you know, so it's good. It's good. So how have you been, Eric? <laughs> Well, Larry, I am about two pages away from being done with the second draft of Hillsborough Road. Oh, very cool. Very and cool. As soon as we're done recording this show, I am going to go into my screenwriting software and finish it up. And then Excellent. cry in the shower because I don't think it's any good. But then, you know, work on the third draft. Yeah, I know. You know, it's always like that because, you know, I'm editing a couple projects and I'm th sitting there thinking, man, they're not going to like this at all. They're <laughs> not going to like this at all. And and I understand. I, I completely understand. But I cannot wait to to read the second draft. And also, you know, I don't want to don't want to jinx this, but uh, we might have something special coming up down the pipeline um podcast wise we for your writing stuff yes what remember about? what we were talking about you I know like no, doing our pod I our, our no special podcast clue, no clue what you're talking about our what special we, podcast we only talk our during series the podcast why are you talking making it seem like we talk oh yeah that's something? right oh that's right that's right we only <laughs> talk that's right that's <laughs> oh well yeah, okay so give me correct um, is is segway sam here I'm, I'm trying. Yes, I think he is. Okay. <laughs> yes, actually, he just walked through the door. Hey, everybody, my name is Segway Sam. And I heard you guys talking about how important art and creativity to, to the well-being of your soul. And I think this is a perfect segue into our, our guest this week. His name is Robin Walker. How's it going? Hi, Robin. Hello, everybody. It's going great. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you for being on here. We are we are blessed to have you on. Thank you. And my pleasure. So, uh, thank you. Um, one of the things that you know, I got your information and reading your bio and looking at your website. Um, first and foremost, uh, so your your day job is a, a therapist. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I'm a uh... and. Mm -hmm. a, license, a, a, a California licensed marriage and family therapist. Very, very cool. But, and I, I don't call this a moonlight. Uh, it could be your second job. I think it looks like it from the, 
from the way you describe having a, uh, a, uh, an art studio where you where you work and vice versa. Um, is is that right? You have like a little that's, art studio. Yeah, that's exactly right. It started. You know, I've been practicing for a little over thirty years, and in the very beginning, I had a corner of my office that was dedicated to um, creative acts. You know, I had a couple of paints and some uh, colored pencils, things like that. And then uh, every every few years, I would change the configuration a little bit until the art studio corner took over the entire office. And now, now wow. it's a uh, psychotherapy practice that's in an art studio, which doesn't mean everybody uh, comes in and, and makes art. It just means if you want to, uh, it's right there. You don't have to get your stuff out. And, and here's the important part. You don't have to put it away when you're done. Mm. Mm, that's very cool. That, you know, that, so, okay. So the first thing we always talk about is, um, you know, what, what inspired you to be an artist and, and how you got into being a therapist. But, and, and I guess, you know what, I'll hold my, my questions until, because I, I think that would be a good, like, wrap up. Like, but tell us first, um, how, how did you become or how did you decide to become a therapist? Was it therapy or art first? Well, that's a great question and a, and a, and a kind of complicated answer. It was art first, but like, um, you know, like, like you were describing in the opening, anytime you do something creative, it comes along with um, an inner criticism. And I had a lot of inner criticism. And so it was art first, but I was uh, pretty good at ignoring it. Um, and uh, we're talking about as a high school student. And I... Uh, I ended up at being about 19 years old and, and just being really unhappy. Didn't have, uh, I didn't have my own direction in my life. I was a fairly good student and, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of moving forward, but I just wasn't moving forward with any happiness. Um, and uh, at that point, I discovered uh, psychotherapy and what a help that was. And, uh, and so I got, on, I got on that path, which meant, you know, I was in college, it meant finishing college, and then it meant graduate school, and then it meant uh, doing, uh, you know, clinical hours and things like that. And there's a lot of clinical hours. Um, and in the middle of my clinical hours, I remembered the urge to be an artist. It, it came back to me. And it probably came back to me because of uh, the therapy that I had done. Um, and and uh, then I realized, well, I wish I'd gone to art school. But, um, you know, be, being a fairly practical person, I, I wasn't going to start all over again. Um, and I also recognized at that moment that I wouldn't be much of a therapist if I was encouraging other people to follow their dreams and, and be true to their hearts if I wasn't doing it myself. So, um, so very, very quickly and very suddenly, I, uh, I uh, decided I will teach myself to paint. And mm. I've painted almost every, I'll paint almost every day since then. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Um, it, once you decided to do your art, because I know you like, you know, when you put off things and when you try not to, or when you try to not listen to that, I guess, would that be your true voice? I, I know now, well, now yeah. I guess we're getting into therapy stuff, but yeah, I think I think I think it might be your true voice. That's the you know the har the hardest thing in the world is knowing what is yours and what isn't. In in the world of psychology, we call these introjects, and there are negative introjects and there are positive introjects. Um, you know, a positive introject would be someone in your life at a young age whose voice you take in uh, to be a part of your own voice. And a negative introject, like a role model, you know, it'd be like a role model. Mm -hmm. And then a negative mm -hmm. introject would be the same thing, but the opposite voice, you know, the inner criticism. And sometimes knowing which voice is which is really tough. And, uh, and I'll tell you the way you get there is practice. You know, you keep asking yourself the same question. Who, who, or, you know, I... I always say that in adolescence, the goal of life is to be original. 
And the problem with adolescents is that they um, lack experience, and so they really don't even know what's original. And then, and then you get the say the saying, "I want to be different, just like everybody else." <laughs> and and then you wow. move forward, you move forward in life, and um, and it changes from being original to being authentic, being true to yourself. And um, and I think that means I think I think every person on earth has a creative urge and a creative impulse. Um, some of us are more practiced at finding it. And listening mm. to that voice inside is something you can get good at simply by maybe having someone help you ask the question, which is why therapy is so uh, helpful to people. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty cool. Because I know, I know for myself, I'm, I'm, as I'm listening to you, and I think people that are are listening to this are going to be maybe thinking the same thing is, Hmm, I have a voice. Hmm. I have another voice, right? Because we (laughs) always have that, that good thing and bad thing. Right. And and that is probably the hardest thing. That is probably the hardest thing to, um, to, to, and is it all about trust? I guess it would be right. Uh, well, trusting oneself, I suppose. Or, you know, I mean, you, you can trust what other people tell you, but, you know, what if they're wrong and it doesn't make any sense to do something because you trust someone else solely. Um, if you trust them and their, and their voice matches yours, that's true trust, I suppose. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. And as you talk, I am, and now I should say, um, you're, you are based out of Los Angeles, correct? Yeah, right. Or okay, all right. Uh and as as we talk, I'm going through your website um and I'm looking at the different uh pictures and art uh that that you've done and it is quite amazing. And um how would you describe your artwork? Um cuz cuz and actually as as we talk um, I would like to invite people to go to the website. It's uh, Robin Walker Studio. Yep, yep, and we'll put a graphic up. Um, but uh, my goodness, how would you describe your art? Um, well, in terms of uh, art speak, it would be classified as um, abstract figurative. If you need a, if you need a label, it might also be called primitive in the sense that I am a self-taught artist and, um, and I'm really interested in, in keeping it self-taught. Um, kind of like, uh, you know, Picasso at the end of his life said, I was just getting good at it, you know, <laughs> and, 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 he's, and he was very successful at keeping it um, fresh. When kids make artwork, you know, they don't have um, an urge to make it look exactly like it does in real life. What they have an urge to do is to simply get a story on paper or on canvas or whatever it is, um, and that can be just shapes. Um, wow. The great artist Juan Miro, you know, he's he's famous for making those gigantic blue paintings with the blobs on them, and he <laughs> said, uh, "There's uh, there's no such thing as abstract art because the person looking at it turns everything into a person." Wow. You know, turns everything into a figure, and I, I think I really believe that. You know, if you see if you see a uh, uh, a canvas with two blobs that are close together and another blob that's a little bit further away, you say, "Oh, there's a couple, and that other one is coming to get them." Mm. You know, <laughs> or something, something like that. Wow. Or or you, or you can turn it into a, it's a mom and a dad and a kid or something like that. Uh, and that's what wow. the human mind does. So. Um, you know, where was I going with this? Oh, that's what, and that's what kids are so good at. You know, kids are very good at just getting the story down and just getting the idea down, following their impulse. Um, and so I have um, tried very hard in my artwork to maintain that, you know, to preserve the primitive quality or the basic quality. Um, and here's the problem is that the longer you paint, the better you get at painting. Um, and so sometimes you have to do things that, that, loosen you back up so that you're just making the, you know, the urge of the gesture or you're, or you're focusing on, um, on brush strokes and interesting marks and things like that in, in order to tell the story. 
Wow. You know, it, that would almost, it, it, would, it seems like it's almost like once, like in filmmaker speak, once a filmmaker crosses that threshold and becomes more like, say, um, uh, like a James Cameron, and, and he's got so many things to play with. You know, you kind of lose sight of the art. I maybe, and not, I'm not trying to like offend anybody out there listening to this, but there, there is, there, there becomes a complication where you're trying for your next film to, to try to get better. But then it's, but then you get to a point where, oh man, I just, I kind of have lost my filmmaking you lose, thing. Yeah, you lose the yeah. freshness. Yeah. 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 I think that's it. Yeah. You know, but also in artwork and in filmmaking, I think in all of the art, you know, there's so many different tastes that there is, there is room for very polished artworks. And there's also room for the very basic uh, gestural kind of artworks. So maybe, maybe yeah. it's a good thing. There's something for everybody. The other way we can look at it, too, is with music. You know, there's amazing classical music where people spend years upon years of mastering their art. But then there's punk rock. You know, <laughs> right. is, you know right. bare bones. And, you know, that is pretty much on the same level, you know, with the and the art that goes into it. Now, I, what I want to know is when did you have the aha moment of merging your love for art with your love for helping other people through therapy? And what um, was you know that what, like what, for you? I, 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 wish, I wish it was a moment <laughs> that I could describe, but it was more like a slow evolution. Um, you know, and I knew, I knew that as I taught myself to paint, I became a, a better person. You know, I'm, I'm a more patient person. I'm a more caring person. I'm a more creative person. I'm a more entertaining person when I'm making artwork. Um, and if that's going to be true for me, that will be true for others too. And so slowly I just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, marshaled the courage to say to someone you know what let's do today let's make a painting instead of talking and mm. and, in, and indeed making a painting especially if you're doing it together is another way of talking it just doesn't have words but it certainly is expression i mean anyone would agree that um that that, that a work of art whether it's music theater painting you know film whatever it is it is it is such an expression and when we see a uh, an important, and you know, an artwork that connects with us. We definitely know there's a communication going on there. We don't need words for it, but it's it's definitely there. So, um, as I as I described earlier, I just kind of kept, you know, making my office a bigger and bigger art space um, until it took over the whole thing. Um, and I mean that was that was years ago now. Once I once I once I got once the art took over, I just left it because <laughs> I felt like uh, you know earlier I was talking about authenticity. Uh, that's my authentic self, you know, being a painter and then helping other people paint. Mm. So now, if <clears throat> comes to you like a child or a family, does the draw me a picture come right away, or does it gradually gradually build up to that? Um, well, that totally depends. Um, it, it depends on what's happening. I mean, I can give you examples. Maybe is a better idea. Yes, please do. Um, um, here's, a, here's a slam dunk, okay? Um, a nine-year-old girl was referred to me. Um, her, her presenting problem was that she doesn't speak. Now, she can speak, but she chooses not to. This is something we call elective mutism. That's what I was about to say. Uh, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> that was, so the, the, the situation here is that she has some, um, some background that's, that's really troubling her. There's a reason she's not speaking, you know, and I've heard some of the story and there's been a, a lot of emotional chaos in her life. And this is her, you know, kind of very understandable response. But then what are we going to do to help her? what we don't have is what therapists rely on most, which is conversation. Mm. We don't have that. So guess what? 
we can sit together and we can make paintings together and we can express each other, express to each other um, the fact that we are, um, you know, both alive and well in this room and we've got a job to do. Wow. Wow. So, so that's a, that's a, that, there's a slam dunk kind of uh, example. Yeah. Um, and then there are others. Let's take the example of um, a 19-year-old boy who um, uh, came in with uh, self-esteem problems, um, you know, kind of always, always apologizing for himself. Um, and, you know, we had talked and talked and talked and just weren't getting anywhere. And I said, you know what we should do? Let's make self-portraits. And so, you know, I have a, a process of helping people do a self-portrait, which you think would be really hard, um, except, you know, we have out here now we have copy machines and, and ways of transferring drawings onto canvases. Um, and uh, you saw in some of my paintings, um, a lot of the figures start with uh, um, uh, magazine pages that I uh, glue onto the canvas and then paint over. Yeah. You know, it's a way, it's a way to make um, a figure it has a very particular look, um, you know, because it's, it's, a, it's like a classic magazine kind of pose. And, um, and then you, if, you, if you paint over it, it makes it look really fresh and really exciting. And so there's ways that people without, many, without much experience in the arts can make art. Anyway, so 19-year-old kid comes in and, you know, he's dealing with his, his he, what, what, I, what I would say is he's got a really faulty uh, uh, opinion of himself. If he saw himself the way everyone else saw him, uh, he wouldn't feel the way he does. And I can say that to him, but he doesn't believe me. He doesn't have an experience to base it on. I so anyway, then we make a, then we make a self-portrait. I'm sorry, say it again. I didn't hear. Oh, I completely understand that. Um, I've dealt with depression since I was a teenager, and what people don't get when you have a low view of yourself, it's kind of like being in a room that's completely pitch black. You know all the stuff that's there, but you yourself can't see it. So it <laughs> right. That's a, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice way to describe it. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> then we make, we make a, a self-portrait. And it's, it's, a, it's a fun way and an interesting way and a surprising way to look in the mirror. And does he does he does he paint what he sees of himself? And are you surprised by what what he sees or what he paints of himself? And well, I'll tell you the the process of what happens usually when doing this is because you know I'm not working with an artist; I'm working with a non-artist in, in in this case. And um and so. The, the individual who's a non-artist is always surprised at what they can do because they never considered it before. And, and that's a very great thing because they look at something and find beauty. And who would have thought in their life that they would find beauty in their face? Mm. Wow. You know, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a very validating. You know, on the, on the one hand, just the act of, of painting, the act of kind of letting go of what should be and accepting what's going to be um, in artwork is very soothing, you know, and so it also kind of takes the defenses down a little bit so you can see better. We all, we all see better when we're not defended. Yeah. 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 Um, what, I guess to change courses a little bit about what we're talking about, um okay two things actually just came to my mind what what who your first patient what was that like where you were on your own and and dealing with you know uh, and talking with your patient and then was it the same as your first art showing the first time you ever showed a piece of your artwork to anybody ever <laughs> is that like two separate things or was it the same? That, that is, that is two separate things. And, and uh, yeah. one of them was much more difficult than the other. Um, yeah. and, and the, and the difficult one was showing my artwork. Wow. You know, oh, really? At that point you're, <laughs> because yeah, you know, you, 
you, you, you put yourself out and you, and you know you've tried something that you hadn't ever tried before and now it's documented, you know, now there's a, a photo of it or, a, you know, a, 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 it's not a photo, but it's like a photo. Of yeah. it. You've got to put it out there and, uh, and there will be people who say, I don't get it or uh, what is that or uh, that's horrible or whatever they're going to say and, and you open yourself up to that. That's, that's quite difficult. The, the, um, the easy thing about being a therapist is that um, you you can hide behind the mantle of being a therapist, and you know it's kind of like a license to ask nosy questions when you think about it. I mean, we actually we we expect therapists to ask nosy questions, and uh, and we expect therapists to have a a, a toolkit of uh, ideas. And so if I come up to a, a client and say, "Here's what I think we should do today. How would you feel about this?" Um, you know, I'm, I'm hiding behind the, the license. When I'm, when I'm presenting my own artwork, I don't have anything to hide behind. Mm. Yeah. So that, that, yeah. that was the much harder of the two of those. What, when, what was your first show? Um, and, and do you have, uh, do you have that first piece of art on display anywhere? Is it on your website? Mm-hmm. It boy is that that is a hard question. The first the first show I would ever consider a show, believe it or not, was um, in a car wash on Sunset Boulevard. I love that, and <laughs> I love that too. Actually, um, it was I I don't know how this came about, but but I got wind of someone who was opening a. a or not, he was reopening a car wash, but he wanted it to make the hip, he wanted to make it into the hip Hollywood car wash. And um, he had, uh, you know, done a, a, a painting on the, on the uh, polished concrete floor. Uh, it was beautiful. And, uh, you know, he was hoping, I guess, to attract, uh, you know, artist types or creative types into the car wash. Um, and I, I put about uh, 10 or 12 paintings up in this car wash. Um, and I, you know what, I, I don't actually remember which the paintings were. Um, and a lot of them I have, but I may not have them documented. But, uh, um, you know, I hate to take time to do this, but I'm going to go on the website right now myself and tell you. This is always good for well, radio, right? Just doing nothing. Yeah. Well, while, while, you're, <laughs> while, you're, while you're searching for that, um, how do you, how do you begin a piece of art that, that, that I, I see on your website and I mean, man, you're like, like the strong man, um, or, yeah, okay. um, you know, like, all, well, really anything. How does that begin? Uh, well, I just, there's, there's two ways that these go. One is I have an idea. Like um, my strongman series is um, it's about identity, um, maybe more so masculine identity than feminine identity, um, and the intersection of um, of that kind of identity and relationships. For instance, the strongman represents um, the lengths that we'll go to to make friends with someone. Mm. You know, I mean, the, the, a, a male-female relationship is kind of the, um, the best example of that. Because uh, if I'm stronger or richer, um, I got a shot with you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, um, and I often will pair together um, a strong man type with a, a man in a suit, because I think, yeah, I I think see that. it's kind of the, the same thing. You know, it's a yeah. Um, if the suit is just a thing that we wear that either hides who we really are or um, helps us present who we really are, depending on what you do with it. Mm. Um, mm. And so I'll start with an idea, but I never start with a drawing and I never start with a kind of a, a getting it on the canvas first. What I do first is just cover the canvas with uh, paint and hopefully all the wrong colors of paint. Um, I, I don't want it to look good. I don't want it to match. I just want to get paint on the canvas. Um, and then from there, I get an idea of, 
of the of the image you know let's say it's a strong man one it's a you know strong men are always more interesting to me in relationships with other people and so it'll be a strong man and another in another uh, figure or a couple of other figures or something um and um and the more i start to um find the figures in the in the mess that i've created um that's when i find the story my work is all narrative you know there's always a story even if it's not obvious i like to i like to leave paintings about 90 percent undone sometimes even you know 70 or, or i'm sorry not 90 but 90 percent done 10 percent undone sometimes i'll make it you know 25 percent unfinished um and there's a good reason for that which is when someone looks at a at an artwork um if everything's finished if everything's done if it's if it's is no secret as to what that painting's about you got about 10 seconds with it while it's interesting whereas mm -hmm. if there's something that's left out the viewer gets to spend some time and interact with the painting. You know, their their psyche or their unconscious gets to work with whatever's in the painting, and it gets more interesting for them. Wow! So wow! So I'll uh, you know I'll start with uh, a kind of a big giant mess, and and then tune in the mess until the story is told. <laughs> Wow. I tell you, you know, I'm going through and please, anybody that's listening to this, we have the links up. We'll have a graphic as we talk. Just please visit, visit Robin's website and you can take a look at all of his art. Um, now, are, are any of your like paintings for sale? My paintings are all for sale. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you that. okay. That's always the right answer to give. Yeah. Yeah. And And how can they... How how can uh, how can just through your website through your contact page? Yep, that's the best way is through is through uh, my yeah the, either the website or my studio. You know, come and visit me. Uh, come come and take me to lunch. That's awesome. Um, oh, that's cool. And then there is a, a very interesting show coming up uh, not until November, but it's a it's the seventh um, annual version of a show called Mirrors of the Mind. And in, in which um, every single artist in the show, and there are many of them, are also psychologists. Oh, wow. And, and, uh, cool. and you'd, you'd think that that would be the most interesting uh, group of paintings you're ever going to see. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and, and let me tell you, there is such a variety of work, some of it overtly psychological and some of it so subtly psychology, psychological you can never uh, figure out what it is. Um, but that's a great show if anyone's in Los Angeles. Um, that, Excellent. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll put a link up for that as well. Yeah, that'll be Googleable. I don't think they have the date um, set yet. Okay, but it's not in November. yet. Okay. When you yeah, know okay. about it, let us know. We'll talk about it on the show and we'll tweet about it, Instagram about it, whatever we can. They get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, 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 and before 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 we wrap up i would like to point out that you teach classes as well correct i do yes i'm I looking do. on your website yeah i but tell us I, a little um, bit about your classes my classes are very much not how to paint classes um i've had uh i've had you know people come for uh, for classes who have never put paint on canvas before and i've had people come who are um you know, very, very adept at that. Um, what I really teach is how to use paint to express yourself. And so, um, you know, every, every person in, in my painting class has a different style because they're not there to learn my style. They're learn they're there to learn their style. And, oh. um, the teaching method is a, a little bit, um, different because, um, rather than saying, well, I might say use more red or be more bold or something like that. But often what I'll say is talk to me about your painting. You know, here's, here's the intersection of, uh, of, of painting and psychology. Um, when someone can talk about their painting, they really are talking about themselves. But it's much easier than talking about yourself because you've got a painting on the wall to describe. Oh, wow. And in, in doing that, they, they get to a genuine place of, expression you know expressing expressing their true self and wow. so that's the class that's the class i you know i might actually come take a class that this is pretty interesting right, we'll you know 
actually maybe what we could do i mean is do a you know is when 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 you know you have your art show coming up maybe um because i'm in los angeles i could come to come to one of your art classes you can talk about um like your art classes a little bit more we could talk to maybe some of your students and then you could talk about your upcoming show that'd be awesome Thurs thursday yeah, that mornings. would be really always cool. welcome excellent yeah. thursday mornings well yeah. and actually we will put um uh like your classes up as well like oh, cool. um, so Very nice. yeah so we'll get all that information from you and um Oh my gosh, here's just I, I would like to have you come back on because it just it, it has gone so fast. And and you are such an interesting human being and such a, a blessing to others. <laughs> and man, it's just it's it's too much. <laughs> thank, well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Well man, we just wanna again thank you so much for coming on the show. And I don't know, I kind of felt like we were NPR on this episode. <laughs> that is, but um, we are recording this on May twenty third. It will be up on May twenty fifth. So after you go see Solo, a Star Wars movie, come home, <laughs> listen to the podcast. Or if you're on your way going to see Solo, a Star Wars movie listen to the podcast i really want to see solo a star wars movie okay everybody um, have a wonderful safe and happy weekend